everyone, I am back in the airport. I've been awake since 4 a.m. and I'm going to Chicago again. Now, it's the second time I'm going to Chicago in the span of a month. If you're wondering why, it's because of 5G. The Galaxy S10 5G is now available in the U.S., but really the only place you can go and try it is Chicago, Minneapolis, maybe somewhere else, but really those two cities, and in those cities it's really pockets of the downtown areas, not really spread out like you would expect with 4G LTE. So today it's been an early morning, I've been around since uh, 4 a.m. And, and now I'm here and I'm about to board the plane in about 10 minutes, uh, but hopefully I'll land on the ground, get the S10 5G and be able to show you guys what that phone is like, it's $1,300 by the way. Uh, and walk around the city and see how fast it connects to uh, 5G networks. All right guys, so this is the Galaxy S10 5G. Sorry for all the fingerprints, it's a bit of a busy day. I'm uh, already on the road walking around in Chicago uh, looking for these 5G nodes, one of which you can sort of see right there all that black stuff those black boxes essentially are the 5g nodes that i'm connecting to on this verizon sim installed galaxy s10 5g uh, in terms of the quick impressions of the phone it doesn't feel any different in size really from the galaxy s10 plus pretty big it's a beautiful screen and, uh, you know, the other differences are you're getting that extra time of flight camera on the rear for better uh, live focus photos. Uh, and and as also, you can also do live focus on video. So you should be able to get some really neat portrait mode-esque effects when you're shooting a video. And uh, so, yeah, that's a quick look at the S10 5G. Uh, not, again, much different. There is a bigger battery. And so far, after using it pretty intensely, testing speeds, I've dipped to 84% perhaps in the span of like under an hour. So, you know, of course this is higher than average usage, but it's it's a start. Um, and uh, just to show you some of the speeds I've been hitting so far, if we go back, we're using the Ookla speed test app. In Verizon store, I hit 1.1 gigabits per second, which is pretty impressive. And then over on the first node, I did a series of tests and I hit 762 all the way up to 970. Some other people were hitting 1.1. So definitely getting much higher feet speeds than I first saw when I came here with the Moto Z3 and the 5G Moto Mod. All right, so let's do a quick test on that node right there. So one thing you should know before I start is that they told us not to really stand across from it. So over there uh, on the other side, it's not really going to give you some good speeds. And I did try that earlier with another node and it only gave me up to like 27 uh, megabits per second. So because the reason is those nodes are shooting uh, 5G basically parallel along the street, so standing across from it isn't gonna really do you much good. Uh, so standing around here is fine, maybe across the street is also better, but let's give it a quick test. That's not bad, 826. And uh, one more thing on upload speeds, that's still using the 4G, 4G LTE framework. So uh, we can't really talk much about upload speeds right now because you're not gonna really see much of a difference, but hopefully that will change in the near future. And the same is true with latency. You see it's 26 MS milliseconds. Uh, that's supposed to be less than 10 ideally, but again, that's something we'll have to see later on as Verizon starts to focus on implementing or improving that technology instead of just download speeds. So here's a quick showcase of me downloading PUBG Mobile, the game, which is about 1.86 gigabytes on the Galaxy Store, uh, which is better optimized for the 5G connection. Now, they also did say that holding the phone might affect it. So if you're covering it like this, you might get slightly slower speeds. So optimally, you're holding it like this, but that is something to consider and it's kind of a bummer. Right now, I'm standing across the street over here from the node and I haven't tried this side yet. So let's see if the speeds are just as fast. Oh. 
So that is pretty crazy. That was about a total amount of maybe under 30 seconds just for this last part to finish. Yep, so about 30 seconds for it to download PUBG Mobile. All right, so bear with me, guys. It is thunderstorming here, which is making uh, getting all this content a lot more difficult. But uh, I'm gonna sort of power through and see how it continues to go along. So there's also a couple of other disclaimers. So not only maybe you might have to hold the phone a certain way so that you're not blocking it. I, I sort of blocked it completely, like held it completely with two hands surrounding the whole phone and it didn't connect to 5G anymore. And uh, one more thing, you see how it's flickering between 5G and 4G right there at the top. That's because uh, 5G needs a data request to be able to show that, that little icon over there. Otherwise, you're using 4G by standard. So right now, there's probably some app in the background that's requesting data. Maybe Gmail is syncing or something like that. Now, if there was no app that was not really doing anything in the background, it would just show you 4G LTE. That's the only reason why it's flickering. When it's in your pocket, you're probably only going to get 4G because it's not going to be able to pick up the 5G signal because, you know, there's something blocking the signal. And the same is true if I walk in this building over here, for example, there's the node. Despite being so close to it, I will probably not get 5G because 5G, the, the, the gigahertz that they're using just can't penetrate these large buildings. Uh, and uh, unless you have a 5G node in the building, that's just not possible at the moment. So this 5G node is basically spreading across this street right here all the way down. And again, it'll probably only work up to like that, that little uh, lane over there, uh, about a full block, maybe a block and a half before you start dipping back into 4G speeds. That's the sort of downside of these nodes is that when you get to them, you're still only limited to uh, such a limited space. So that's why it's sort of difficult. It's a bit of a scavenger hunt. We're like going uh, node to node to try and find these nodes and then we can only stay within a reasonable distance. And even standing this close to it, they did say that you might see some uh, not so fast speeds, but uh, that, that also depends. I think they said the best optimal is to sort of stand maybe over there. And I just did that and I got about, you know, 600, 700 uh, megabits per second. So let's try it over here. And we also need to connect to the Verizon uh, server over here, ideally, because that's what they say is optimized. And again, the way I hold the phone might need to be adjusted. But it looks like standing right here is about not, it's not too different from standing over a little further back and getting close to 700, 627 megabits download speed. So that's, you know, pretty good, but it's not the best that I've seen today. And again, uh, there are a lot of things that are uh, uh, potentially affecting that. And that's just one of the things with 5G right now is that it doesn't seem necessarily to be consistently over one gigabit per second just yet. By far the coolest part of checking out the Galaxy S10 5G in Chicago has been downloading content with it, like doing real world things that real people would do. Uh, downloaded Bird Box uh, in high quality from Netflix in just around 20 seconds. I downloaded an entire season of Sneaky Pete from Amazon Prime Video, that's about 10 episodes, in just about 93 seconds. And then I downloaded PUBG Mobile from the Galaxy Store on Samsung's Galaxy Store in just about 23 seconds. So I'm downloading all this you know, stuff that is gigabytes of sizes basically, and I'm getting them for a much faster time with the Galaxy S10 5G. And that's something that I haven't been able to do when I'm testing the regular Galaxy S10 Plus on 4G LTE. For example, uh, I tried to download an episode of The Flash. I did that on the Galaxy S10 5G in about 20 seconds or so, uh, maybe a little more than that. But with the Galaxy S10 Plus on 4G LTE, uh, it was stuck on, it was somewhere on 5% in the minute I had waited to sort of download one episode of The Flash on Netflix in high quality. So in the span of one minute, I had only reached 5% on this phone and on the S10 5G, on the 5G network, I had already finished it in just, you know, 20, 30 seconds. So that's sort of the difference that you should come to expect with 5G and 4G LTE.
And a couple of other things that I wanted to quickly mention, I have to sort of give back this device pretty soon, uh, but the Galaxy S10 5G does have the, the extra time of flight camera on the rear, as well as an improved time of flight sensor on the front. And that basically means in the camera app when you're, you now have a live focus video option, as well as live focus should just generally be better. Uh, and I did a couple of shots. I didn't really see too much of a difference. Uh, live focus is Samsung's portrait mode. So, you know, things like say an object or a person, it'll add that blur effect. Basically with the time of flight camera, you should get more accurate blur around a subject. Uh, and this also applies with selfie camera. And that also means you also get live focus video, which is basically portrait mode in a video. So if you're taking a video of someone or an object, you'll be able to add sort of this blur effect uh, around them in a video, which, you know, a couple of other phones have now. Uh, it's never been great. Uh, it's a little better, I think, on the S10 5G, but again, it's something that's kind of hit or miss. It still looks a little funky and the quality of the video isn't that great, but it's kind of a neat feature and definitely we will require some more testing to see how it really holds up uh, over a period of time. Uh, the battery life also, we've been uh, playing around with this phone for a couple hours, mostly just doing speed tests. So very unusual battery test really, to, to really be able to say how long this will last, but it's a 4,500 million power battery. So way bigger than the 4,100, I believe on the S10 Plus. And it's currently at 50% and it was at 100% when I first started this morning. Uh, so it's been a couple of hours. Again, this is a very rough test that's it's really difficult to be able to say anything final on the battery life, but um, it seems hopeful, but again, this will completely depend on whether you are in a 5G area or if you're not, if you're just using 4G LTE. Uh, but, but it doesn't feel that much thicker than the S10 Plus and the size is about the same too. So it's nice that you're getting a bigger battery in that sort of same uh, body. And of course, one more thing I wanted to mention was there is an app over here called, on this phone, called the Quick Measure. And it's kind of like Apple's Measure app or Google also has a Measure app. Basically, you can use it to point it at objects and find the distance between you and the object. Or you can point it at like a box, for example, and it'll try to, right now it says 20 inches to the box. And, you know, sometimes it will also try to give you the full dimensions of the box. Uh, it's not working and it, it has been very tricky to have work. Uh, like it, it's very inconsistent basically. Uh, so it's difficult to say whether this is just a software issue or just something that's uh, not that great of a feature at the moment. Uh, but you can also make pointers and like point at objects to sort of figure out the distance between them. So you can measure, get some rough measurements, but again, uh, it seems to be kind of finicky uh, and I don't know how useful that really will be at the end of the day. Uh, but the real final thing that we have to talk about is the price because this is a $1,300 phone uh, and I don't think it really is worth the price. Uh, you know, the, the Galaxy S10 Plus is about $1,000. Uh, that already, I think, is a lot of money. Uh, I don't, if you potentially live in Chicago, Minneapolis, maybe that's a reason to buy this phone. Maybe you might think this might be good for future proofing. However, think about next year, we're probably gonna see more 5G phones than ever before, which means the price will probably come down. And then at that point, hopefully we'll see far more 5G coverage around the US. So it's not like you're only have to go into specific areas of Chicago and Minneapolis, but um, it just makes more sense to just wait for other companies to come out with more 5G phones at cheaper prices and just for the coverage to just get better. Uh, now, if you have $1,300 to burn, then sure, then this will probably be a more than satisfactory phone for you.